Hey, welcome back to the Five Pillars of Business Success for Startups. I'm Brett Hirsch, of course. You see me in several of these. Uh, this is our alpha test for the Five Pillars of Business Success Boot Camp. Our whole goal here is really to review the material, make sure it's relevant for a boot camp basic training for individuals who are entering business but may not know very much about business itself. Um, we are now on Pillar 2. This is a third part of Pillar 2, the customer experience. As I said, we're really reviewing the material, and then we can talk about stylistically how we want to best present this material. Remember, it's a boot camp basic training. We want to give you the basics so your clients or your business can move forward quickly and achieve business success. Now, in this section, we'll be discussing creating an experience. Now, creating a customer experience starts with who? You're creating it for a particular individual. You're creating for your customer. You know, there's an exclamation point there because it's pretty important. You're creating a customer experience for your customer. But in order to do that, you need to know who they are, and you also need to know what they really buy. And remember, they purchase why, not what. We went over that last. They purchase the experience of buying a product or service from your business. They don't necessarily only purchase your product or service. There's a tipping point that's called the customer experience. That's what it's really all about. We're going to help you create that experience. Okay, so we need to know who your customers are. Now, if you're a survival mode business or a business starting out, you're going to be hungry for any customers you can get. Be careful with that, okay? Survival business, I mean, survival businesses try to be everything to everyone. Your business can't be everything to everyone. Successful owners, on the other hand, know that they can't be that. They know exactly who their customers are. You're going to have to be successful. You're going to have to find your customers. And that's really the, the purpose of this particular pillar is help you start to find out who your customers are. And we're going to start that with the value statement. It tells you who your customers really are. It's going to discuss or allow you to determine the benefit your customers, your customers purchase, the benefit why they purchase your product service. Remember, we're starting with why, the benefit they purchase. It's also the foundation of experience creation. And this cannot be overstated. The customer experience is everything about your business. It is everything that comes in contact with your business. It involves all your advertising. It involves every single interaction with your customer. It ultimately becomes the foundation of your brand. It becomes the foundation of your culture of your business as your business grows. So the customer experience is really, really, really deep, okay? Just wanna make sure you understand that. Okay, here's a value statement, basically. It's really simple, but it's very, very valuable, very powerful um, as a business owner. You just break this down. Okay, your business does what for who? That's what we're going to answer with this, um, with the value statement. Your business, whatever your business is, your business name, whatever it might be, what does it do? What benefit does it provide? And who does it provide that benefit for? This is the foundation of creating a customer experience. So we're going to start off with the who. This section is going to be discussing the who part of the customer experience. Who is your customer? Okay, your customer is going to be a decision maker. That means it's going to be an individual. It's always going to be someone who says yes or no to purchasing product or service from your business. Always going to be a decision maker. Every time you reach out to the public to grow your business, you're always reaching a decision maker. It's a decision maker in your most profitable market. Now that means that it could be many things, but it basically means a segment of the population or a segment of your customers, your potential customers, who are going to be the most profitable. And by that, I got profitable in quotes, as you might see. That means they're the easiest you want to work with. And maybe in the type, you may have types of individuals that really aren't well suited for your business. You may have types of individuals that you just don't want to work with because they're too much hassle. So which, which is the most profitable market? For your decision, but this is your decision maker is in decision maker in the most profitable market who can afford your product or service. That's very important. Remember, you can't be everything to everybody, so they have to be able to afford your product or service. And I've said that you're going to find out in pillar um, three, make a profit is you can't always be the lowest priced person on the block. I always say this on teaching these courses: there can only be one Walmart. You want to add value. You don't want to be the cheapest unless you have some type of cost competitive advantage, which many, most small business owners, frankly, don't. They can afford your product or service and they need your product or service. So let's go over quickly. Decision maker in your most profitable market who can afford your product or service and also needs your product or service. So this is how we're going to drill down on this. This is an exercise you can go through. You can come back and watch it again. We have to go through it fairly quickly here now. But what I want you to do is I want you to think about all the groups that need your product or service. Oh, this is going to be broad. Who all can use your product or service? 
who all can benefit, the many, many groups that can benefit from the product or services that you provide. Write them down in like groups by demographics, like kids age so-and-so to so-and-so, um, high school teachers, real estate agents, um, moms might be the decision maker, moms in certain households, dads in certain households, got people that like sporting, people that have lawns, maybe you're in a lawn business. So these are gonna be big groups. You know, Find a group that needs your product or service. Now from that group, we're gonna have a bunch of different groups, uh, you, you want to pick out the ones who can afford your product or service. The people that, of the groups that need your product or service, what smaller segment do you know of can afford the price that you're going to have to charge for your product or service? Now, if you do pillar three, make a profit, you're probably going to need to come back and watch this again because you're gonna, that'll help you determine what the price you must charge for your product or service. Now, we want the most profitable segment. That's what I said earlier. This is the group that you can most easily serve and make the most money off of. Let's go back to the landscaping example or you know whatever. You'll find that a lot of folks that get into landscaping, for example, their biggest cost is time traveling between jobs to work on various people's lawns, whether they're mowing lawns or working on lawns. So their most profitable segment might be, for example, large HOAs, higher income families, high income households. That for them could be the most profitable segment. I know like for our tax business oftentimes, our most profitable segment we know is not individuals who try to do their own books because their books are usually really messed up and we lose money quite frankly, we say frankly a lot in this alpha thing, from serving them. So we choose not to serve them. They are not profitable for us. So remember, so you go group that needs your product or service, can afford your product or service in your most profitable segment and then ultimately you're going to drill down to that. There is going to be a decision maker at the bottom of this inverted triangle that's your customer. The decision maker is your customer. That's now you know who we're going to create the experience around. Awesome. Okay, I'm going to go through an example here. This is really kind of an academic example, but it covers all the bases of what I want to teach in this section. We're probably going to have a couple other examples added, maybe interviewing some customers or discussing different, um, I mean, interviewing some business owners and, and maybe me discussing different customers I've worked with over the years as we go through these different exercises. But this is Jenny's drill down. Okay, this is an example. It really, it really, it kind of has a twist in here that you're gonna find kind of interesting a lot of businesses run into. Okay, Jenny's business makes basketballs. She either manufactures basketballs, maybe she's a big retailer for basketballs. But anyways, Jenny's basketballs manufactures and or sells basketballs, okay? The distinction is really kind of not the point here between the two. But she needs to find, let's say, groups that need her product or service. Who needs basketballs? She needs to pick a group that your business is well suited to serve. Note your business may serve more than one group or potentially serve more than one group and you can still have two decision makers in different groups. But guess what? The benefit you offer those different groups may be different. That's very important you understand that. You build the experience. They may have a different experience, I guess is what I'm saying, on the root level. But each group is gonna have a different decision maker. Different decision maker may need different, um, different benefits. So let's look here. Who needs basketballs? Jenny's looking at this, she, hey, she can sell to individual customers. She could sell to internet resellers of basketballs. She could sell directly to department stores or wholesale sellers who in turn sell department stores. She could focus on recreational sporting leagues. You got athletic school departments you could be focused on. They need basketballs, maybe a lot of them. Then you got your pro and semi-pro leagues. Now she could pick one or more of those, but these are a lot of different groups. And Jenny, after she goes through this here, she decides for this particular product, for this particular basketball, at least one of the groups she's going to focus on is going to be school athletic departments. Okay? Now, that's a pretty big market across the United States. Now she needs to find a group that can afford her product or service. Who can afford her basketballs? So she looks at schools receiving grants for athletic programs. There are many grants. The government gives off many grants to increase, increase the time that kids exercise, decrease the time, the involvement in extracurricular activities, sporting events. There's many areas that are going to that, getting kids, you know, 50 minutes up and running or whatever you might be that the, you know, the NFL does. Anyways, they want to focus on schools receiving grants because that's money coming in. It makes them more able to purchase basketballs. And also, she wants to look at zip codes, schools and zip codes with high income, growing economies and populations because these are growing areas, okay, across the United States or wherever she's selling these basketballs. They're going to be much more likely to be able to afford her basketball. So that makes sense. Are you with me so far?
Yeah, I hope so. That's really important. Okay, now she needs to choose her most profitable segment. What's her segment choices? Who, who might she want to work with? She can work with private schools. These are all schools. Charter schools, elementary schools. Of course, you got your middle schools, and then you have your high schools. Her most profitable segment, however, is she decides that, middle, or she does some studies, and she learns that middle schools have the highest number of recreational hours per student. And there are also three times as many middle schools across the United States as high schools in the United States. So that, to her, is her most profitable segment. Now we get to the decision maker. She needs to find a decision maker. Who makes the ultimate decision about whether or not to purchase the product or service? And here's the twist I told you about earlier. Okay, she's so a decision maker. Regional athletic directors have the most influence in the purchase decision. They are really, let's say, the buyers of the basketballs. They have the ultimate write-off on who is purchasing the product or purchasing the product or service. They're really the most influence in the purchase decision. However, School athletic directors, let's call them phys ed instructors, they really make the equipment request to the regional director. So this is kind of interesting here. You've got two decision makers in here, and these two decision makers may have direct, you know, completely different benefits they're looking for. So who's Jenny discussed, she has a primary customer, this is the person who ultimately writes off on the purchase decision. That's regional athletic directors, but she also has a secondary market or a secondary customer and that is school athletic directors or the phys ed coaches who actually instruct the kids. They're actually the users of the product or service, but the regional athletic directors are really the buyers. So they got two groups that she needs to address um, or to create an experience around, let's say, in order to maximize her chance of success in this particular market. So primary regional athletic directors, school athletic directors of middle schools in regions experience population growth, and population and economic growth that are also receiving grants. So she brings all those two together, that's her target market, that's her, that's her customer. So Jenny must now construct experiences for middle school athletic directors and, and regional directors um, in areas experiencing economic growth, that's her customer. Now, so where we answer this, there's her value statement. After you watch this, start working on your own. Jenny's Basketballs does what for? school and regional athletic directors. So we've answered, we know who our customer is, we know who the decision makers are, and the individuals who influence that decision. So your job is going to be, your activity that you are now assigned is going to be to find your customers. Remember, it's a decision maker who needs and can afford your product or service. You're going to construct the experience around your customer once you find them. And that's it for this seg segment of customer experience, Part three, finding your customer.